All right, September is historically the worst month of the year for the stock market, but Eric Wiegand from U.S. Bank, we're two weeks into the month and stocks are at record highs. What's going on? You know, I think investors have uh, elected to, to focus on the glasses being half full, that, that half full The prospect, less bad scenario. The, the less bad scenario. And less bad certainly is, you know, the impact of two catastrophic hurricanes mm. being less bad uh, th than feared. Uh, and the heightening expectations that we were going to see another missile launch over the weekend not being realized. So I think that's given uh, some comfort, some ease uh, to investors, and they've subsequently elected to focus on uh, what we continue to see as a synchronized global economic recovery. Uh, and continued strong earnings. Now, obviously, a lot could happen over the next two weeks. Uh, what do you think? I mean, do equities end up bucking the trend this month and pulling out some nice gains? Certainly, you know, from a technical standpoint, the bias is, you know, for for the markets to continue to move sideways to to firm. Uh, you know, our expectation w would be that we would not be surprised to see some volatility creep in. Uh, in the earning, remaining two weeks of in September. In the remaining two weeks of September, really until we get into mid-October and get back to earnings season. Uh, is earnings season the key to the market th this year? I mean, obviously double-digit growth in earnings have pushed stocks to record highs, mm -hmm. but obviously we have the Janet Yellen put in the market. I mean, h how do you analyze this? You know, we do think that earnings are critical for th the markets to sustain their current levels or advance from here. Uh, a lot of expectations are that the markets will, con the companies will continue to demonstrate earnings growth. Uh, if that is the co case, that will be supportive. We're generally not seeing a significant uh, rise in inflation or inflation mm. expectations. There's no inflation. We're not seeing, uh, we're not seeing evidence or the, the likelihood of an increase in recession. Uh, so in that low growth uh, in, environment, earnings do hold the key. Now we're at 2487 in the S&P 500, a record high, right? Um, where do we go by the end of the year? Because we still have Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin on CNBC saying that tax reform is coming by the end of the year, which we know would be such a stimulus for the markets and for corporate America. So what's your year-end target? You know, our year-end target is a, r a range between 2500 and 2600. We, we're pointing to 2550 as being our year-end target, and that's really, you know, uh, emphasized by continued earnings growth. Mm. Uh, and in we, which we sectors? Still, and we still expect to see Fed activity before year-end, so that's a, a, a little bit of a different view from consensus. And which sectors do you, you From a see, sector standpoint, yeah. we continue to like uh, those sectors that are able to demonstrate growth. Mm. So we, from a style standpoint, we're still uh, have a buy there, uh, but also those companies that are able to grow faster than their peers. Is that tech? Uh, it certainly, uh, you know, would be tech. Uh, you're seeing select uh, areas within consumer discretionary. Sure. Uh, we're we're still a little bit, uh, you know, concerned about uh, things like financials uh, in here, which would certainly be a beneficiary if we were to see that tax. Rate yeah, I mean, look at a. 10-year yield of 2.1%. Uh, That's nothing for the banks. But, Eric, we'll leave it right there for right now. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.